Let's review how to solve linear equations. So here's an example of a linear equation. We might be asked to solve 10x plus 2 equals 24. So just as a quick review, what does this mean? Well, x represents some number, we'll call it an unknown number, because at the start we don't know what value would make this equation true. This equation is saying that whatever the number x is, I can multiply it by 10 and then add 2, and if I do, the result will be the number 24. And so our goal is to come up with a way of finding the value of x so that that works. Now you might think guessing and checking values would be a good approach, and occasionally you can get away with that, but it's better to have a systematic approach for solving this kind of problem, because when it gets very complicated, guessing and checking can be a lot of work, and it could take a very long time before you guess the right answer. So let's review a systematic way of doing this. First of all, what we want to do is think about what is going on with the x here. We're multiplying it by 10, and then we're adding 2. So that I know that that's the order because that's the order of operations. We know in multi multiplication comes before addition in the order of operations. And in the way this is written here, we can see that that's what we would do. If we plugged in a number for x, like if I plugged in a 3, 10 times 3 gives me 30, and then add 2, and I get 32. That's obviously not the right answer. So what we're going to try to do here is isolate x, get x by itself in this equation. In fact, sometimes you'll see the question written that way. It'll ask you to isolate x in an equation like this one. So what that means is we're going to try to undo the operations that are being done to a number you plug in for x to try to get x by itself. Remember, just like when you put on your socks and shoes to get them off, you have to take off your shoes before your socks. You have to undo the operations in the reverse order that you did them. So if I'm doing the multiplication before the addition here, to undo that, I have to undo the addition before I undo the multiplication. So let's see, how would we do that? How do I undo addition? Well, I do the opposite operation. The opposite of addition is subtraction. So here's what we can write. I can start with what I had on the left side there, 10x plus 2. That represents some number. If we know what x is, we could figure out what number that is. I'm going to subtract 2 from that number. I'm also going to do that to the right side. I'm going to subtract the same value. Remember when equal sign means is the same as. So if I had the left side equals the right side here, that means the value on the left side is the same as the value on the right side. Whatever number we get out of 10x plus 2 is the same as the number 24. So, well, if they were the same, then when I subtract 2, the results will also be the same. So these two things are equal. Now I can start to simplify. Because, look, if I add 2 and then subtract 2, that cancels out because plus 2 minus 2 is just 0. So I'm really looking at 10x plus 0 on the left side. Well, I'm not going to write plus 0 because that doesn't change the value. So it's just 10x on the left side. And on the right side, 24 minus 2 is 22. So I'm one step closer to isolating x, to getting it by itself. The next thing I want to do is undo the multiplication, the 10 times x. I need to undo that, and the opposite operation of multiplication is division. So in order to undo the multiplication, I want to divide by the same number. If I have 10 times x, I want to divide that by 10. And I have to do that to both sides of the equation. So I divide both sides by 10. Why do I do that? Because on the left, I have x times 10. And then when I divide it by 10, dividing undoes the multiplying. And that means I just get x back. On the right side, I have 22 tenths which you could simplify a few different ways. Uh, you could reduce that fraction to lower terms, which would be 11 fifths. 
you could write it as a decimal, which would be 2.2, and that's an exact value for the decimal. There's no rounding involved, so I can say that those are uh, equal. You could also write this as a mixed number, but we don't tend to do that in algebra. We don't tend to use mixed numbers very much because sometimes it looks like multiplication, right? Two and a half kind of looks like two times a half. And so we tend to avoid doing that in algebra. Um, so I'm not going to write a mixed number, but all three of these different ways of writing x are legitimate ways to express the answer. And if I plugged 2.2 back into this equation, you'd see that it worked. 10 times 2.2 would give me 22. And then if I add 2 to that, 22 plus 2 is 24. So this was just a little check, which is often a good idea after you solve a linear equation to plug it back in and check to make sure that it does give you what you want. All right, let's try another one. Um, I'm going to go a little bit faster through the steps this time because we've already reviewed the ideas and I want to focus on uh, what are the uh, new techniques for solving this kind of equation. So this time I've got fractions. There are two ways to solve this problem. Um, let's just do the one that looks like the way we did it last time. Let's undo the addition. So I can take the equation's left side and subtract one fourth from it. And I want to subtract the same value from the right side. So then these cancel out, the plus one fourth and minus one fourth, leaving me with just one half x on the left side. What's on the right side? Uh, two minus one fourth, well, two is the same as eight fourths. How do I get that? Well, two is the same as two times one. And instead of writing a one as one, I could write it as the fraction four over four. And if I multiply, I can think of the two as a fraction two over one. And then two times four is eight. 1 times 4 is 4. So I'm using the idea for fractions that I just multiply straight across here. That's how I got 8 fourths. So 2 is the same as 8 fourths. If I subtract a fourth from that, I'm going to get 7 fourths. Okay. So this was just a little side calculation to review how to simplify fractions. Now, I'm one step closer to isolating x, uh, right now I'm multiplying x by a half. Multiplying by a half. Mul you can think of that as dividing by two, right? Multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. Dividing is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So if I want to undo multiplying by a half, which is the same as dividing by two, I can undo that if I multiply by two. So I'll take two times what was already there on the left side, and two times what was already there on the right side. And simplify. Let's simplify two times one half. Two times one half is one. And that will give me one times x, but I'm not going to write one times x. That's the same as just x. And then on the right side, I've got 2 times 7 fourths. If you want to simplify that, you can think of it as 2 over 1 times 7 over 4. And one thing we could do to reduce this before we simplify is cancel this 2 with this 4, giving us 7 halves. So the answer for this problem is x equals 7 halves. And if you want to write that in decimal form, 3.5 would do it. OK. So this works. This is an answer. But we had to deal with fractions throughout the problem. And not everyone is really comfortable with fractions. And it is easy to make a mistake. You should try to be comfortable with it. but. 
I want to show you a way to do this while avoiding fractions until the very end. So this was a legitimate solution, but let's try something else. The first thing I'm going to do in my second approach is get rid of all the fractions. I'm going to multiply everything by a number that allows me to cancel all of the fractions. So in the solution we just looked at, we saw that when we were trying to get rid of the one half in front of the x, we could multiply by two. Similarly, if I wanted to multiply uh, by four, I could get rid of the one fourth. Actually, if I multiply by four, I will get rid of the fraction one half as well. Watch this. If I have four times the entire left side, and four times the right side. In order to simplify the left side, I have to distribute. So I have four times this, and four times this. Four times one-half times x plus four times one-fourth. I might as well simplify the right side while I'm here. Four times two is eight. Now we can simplify a little bit more. Four times one-half, that's four over one times one over two. You can do a side calculation and see that that's going to simplify to just two. Let's simplify to 2 over 1, which is the same as 2. And then 4 times 1 fourth, that's going to simplify to 1. Now notice what's going on here. I multiplied both sides by 4, and then I distributed. And that was enough for me to get rid of all the fractions. Doing that in one step, and I won't have to worry about any more fractions until the very end. Let's see how to finish this. Um, it's just like an earlier problem, so I'll take uh, minus 1 from each side, and that gives me 2x on the left, 7 on the right, and then divide both sides by 2, just like before, and I get the same answer as before. Alright, so this is a nice trick, getting rid of the fractions. How, what should you multiply in general by to get rid of the fractions? Well, you want to multiply by the least common denominator, uh, or the least common multiple of the denominators. So the smallest thing I could multiply by that would cancel the 2 and the 4 is 4. Um, just as a little side example, what if I had something like 1 half x plus 1 third? What would I want to multiply by in order to eliminate both of those fractions? Well, the least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So if I multiplied all that by 6 and then distribute, it will give me 6 times 1 half is 3x, 6 times 1 third is 2. And so th that is what I would do if I had those fractions, one half and one third instead. Uh, careful, don't get confused. That's not part of the same problem we just solved. This is just an illustration of how you modify this technique when you have different denominators. Okay, uh, next example. Uh, we just used distribution. Let's use that again uh, just to get some practice with it. So I I have to solve this equation where I've got a number of things going on here with these parentheses. I need to simplify and get rid of the parentheses to make this look like the kind of problem we just solved. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute the 2 to each of these things and the 3 to each of these things. So that's going to give me 2x plus 2. And out of the second piece here, I'm going to get 3x minus 3, be careful about that, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. And I'm adding those together. The right side hasn't changed. The next thing I want to do is combine like terms. See, I have two expressions on the left side that both involve a number times x, and I can combine those. 2x plus 3x gives me 5x. And then 
plus 2 minus 3 will simplify and give me minus 1. Now I'm going to undo subtracting of 1 by adding 1. And I have to do that to both sides. So 5x minus 1 plus 1 is just 5x. 5 plus 1 is 6. And then I can isolate x if I divide both sides by 5. So x is 6 fifths, which in decimal form is 1.2. Let's do one more. This equation has two variables in it. Um, and notice that we're being asked to do something a little bit different. We're asked, we're asked to solve for y. So what does that mean? Well, that actually means we're being told to isolate y. Get y by itself. So when we do that, we're not going to try to isolate x. We're going to treat x as another number that we can move around with the goal of getting y by itself. So think about what's going on with the y here. I'm multiplying it by 2 and then I'm adding this other thing, the 4x. To undo that, the second operation was the addition, so I undo that first. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. So I have 4x plus 2y. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. Why do I do that? So I'm adding 4x and subtracting 4x. Those cancel out, leaving me just 2y. And I'm one step closer to isolating y. The next step is to undo this multiplication, 2 times y. If I want to undo that, I need to divide by 2. Another way to think of dividing by 2 is multiplying by the reciprocal, multiplying by 1 half. So if I multiply both sides by 1 half, then on the left side, the 2 times 1 half will give me 1, 1 times y is just y. And you'll see the reason that I decided to think of it as multiplying by the reciprocal is because it makes it easier to see what happens next. When we're simplifying the right side, I have a multiplication times this expression in parentheses, so I distribute 1 half times 10 is 5, and 1 half times 4 is 2. So 1 half times 4x is 2x. But be careful, notice that there's a subtraction here. So it wasn't actually a, a 2x, it was a, or a, it wasn't actually a 4x, it was subtracting 4x. So when I multiply that by 1 half, I have to remember that I'm subtracting the 2x.